Welcome to Rex. In this video, we'll be learning about how to run a two independent sample t test using Rex. The two independent sample t test helps us to compare the means of two sets of data. Specifically, this test is used to determine if the means of two independent groups are statistically different. Note that in order to run this test, your data must meet the assumptions of independence, normality, and homogeneity of variance. Additionally, unlike the z-test, this test should be used when the population variance is unknown. Let's first take a look at our data. In this data set, the systolic blood pressure was measured in 60 patients who were treated with two different treatment methods labeled group 1 and 2. Let's say we want to see if the mean patient blood pressure of these two treatment groups are different. In order to run our analysis, we first select our data, and we click Compare Groups, Compare Means, and Two Independent Sample T-Test. We'll first be using the Variable tab to define the dependent and grouping variables. Under Data Format, we first select Data because we are analyzing data in an Excel spreadsheet. Next, we can see that the headings in the first row of the Excel datasheet are displayed under All Variables. We can use the arrow buttons to add or remove variables from each option. Let's first select the variable of interest, systolic blood pressure, as a dependent variable. Next, we will be selecting group as our grouping variable. Next, we go to the Analysis tab. We can use this tab to define the null and alternative hypotheses and to decide whether or not to output the confidence interval. For our null hypothesis, we will assume that the difference in population means is zero, meaning that the mean systolic blood pressures of the two treatment groups are not significantly different. Next, for our alternative hypothesis, which assumes that the means of the two groups are significantly different, we will run a two-sided hypothesis test. Lastly, we will select to output the confidence interval, and we will enter 0.95 as the confidence level. Finally, we go to the Output tab. In this tab, we can select the graphs to output. Today, we will output both a histogram and a box plot. Once we are done setting up our analysis, we click OK. Once the analysis is complete, a window pops up with the results. Let's take a look at our results. The analysis description displays our test parameters, and the descriptive statistics section displays the number of valid samples, mean, and standard deviation for each group. Rex first verifies that the data meets the required assumptions to run the analysis. First, we had to assume that the dependent variable was approximately normally distributed for each group. Here, the Shapiro-Wolk test is used to test for this assumption of normality. In this test, we reject the null hypothesis of normality when the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05. This indicates that the data is not normally distributed. However, for our data, we see that the p-value is greater than 0.05 for both groups. These results indicate that our variable, SBP, is normally distributed. A QQ plot, which shows the distribution of the data against the expected normal distribution, can also be used to visually check for normality. As we can see, these data form a pretty straight line, which tells us that our variable is approximately normally distributed. Next, we also had to assume that the variances are approximately equal across groups. The Levine's test was used to test for this assumption of homogeneity of variance between groups. In this test, we reject the null hypothesis of homogeneity when the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05. This indicates that the variances are not equal across groups. However, for our data, we can see that the p-value is greater than 0.05 which indicates that the variances are approximately equal across group 1 and group 2. Now that we know that the required assumptions were met, we can check our t-test results. In Rex, the two-sample t-test is performed assuming both homogeneity and heterogeneity of variance between groups. 
Notice that when homogeneity was assumed, the p-value was greater than 0.05. Because of this, we failed to reject the null hypothesis of homogeneity of variance. This result indicates that the difference in mean systolic blood pressure between the two treatment groups was not statistically significant. Next, let's look at our graphs. Here we can see that both the histogram and box plot are color-coded for each group. This helps us compare the distribution of group 1 and 2. Overall, as we have seen in this video, the independent sample t-test helps determine whether the means of two independent groups are statistically different. Thank you for watching today's video in Statistical Analysis in Rex Pro. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Rexoft's YouTube channel for more informational videos on statistics, data, and how to use Rex.